at Sunamy University of Technology. We have Professor B.B. Anand, Professor of Public Policy and Sustainable Development from the University of Bradford. And we have Dr. Jalaya Ahmedou-Bello, Assistant Professor at Coventry University. Our panelists will all present and then following their presentations, everybody will have the opportunity to ask questions. You can submit your questions by raising your hand and we'll call upon you to ask your question in person or you can use the chat function. Um, please feel free to put your questions in the chat function at any time. We will save them till the end of all the presentations, but do please feel free to put them in at any time. If you do choose to raise your hand to ask your question, just remember that you are all on mute, so you need to unmute yourself so that we can hear you. So I'm going to pass on to our panelists now because that's who you all want to hear from. You don't want to hear from me too much, I'm sure. Um, and to start the session, we're going to hear from Professor Zane Uddin Manyan. Professor, would you like to start? Yes. Okay, um, is, can you see my slides? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Clear? Yes. Clearly. Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, Zain. Uh, today I'm pleased to share our experiences in uh, nurturing socially conscious students. I would like to thank World Technology University Congress, World Technology University Network, for inviting me to share our experiences today. Um, uh, I call this uh, topic of uh, presentation UTM Prospering Lives with one of our institutes, Institute for Life Ready Graduates in UTM. So I'll talk about one of the experiences we went through, the real life experience, and then uh, what is uh, UTM I League all about and why and how we do uh, nurture our socially conscious students successful projects. Uh, I will share some successful projects and programs and the impact it has on community as well as the students themselves. I'm sure you're familiar with this news uh, early during the COVID-19 pandemic when uh, people across the world are scrambling yeah, to um, think of what to do with our students. Are we going to give them pass or fail? And some, to some extent, a professor in Columbia University, uh, in fact, go to the extent of uh, telling everybody an automatic A would be fitting for our students. At that time, I was quite stressed. <laughs> and uh, we did not want to, we did not feel that we want to jump into the bandwagon. And I wrote an article about uh, that. Uh, I, as I show here, pass fail, A for all, whether or not we should jump on the bandwagon. At the end of the article, I remember sharing this uh, very strong message that the bigger concerns that we have lingering in our mind, if we choose what I call as the easy way out, what will happen to the students? Yeah? Students would become largely disengaged from the critical courses because if they get A automatically, they would not be so serious to take their courses, uh, and what if these courses are prerequisites for other courses? And what if the crisis, like it does now in Malaysia also, extends well beyond the current semester? And mm. what will happen if many of the students yeah, need to, um, uh, will be given an A or pass or fail automatically? Then uh, there will be some serious issues. And in the future, you will see that some employer wouldn't even remember what happened to the students, but all they know is actually uh, they want they, they wouldn't accept the excuse of uh, students having poor command of knowledge and skills, uh, but at the same time getting an A. So this is actually life, uh, I thought, and student and staff must be made ready. They must be made right ready because challenges are everywhere. It happens all the time, and students and staff as well must learn through our experience, uh, through experiential learning. Here at UTM, we nurture life-ready graduates who embody, yeah, we aspire to nurture life-ready graduates who embody wisdom, humanity, 
have community at heart and entrepreneurial qualities driven to prosper lives. There are five areas that we focus on at UTM I League. The first is to uh, mobilize or to help students achieve their gainful employment, not just be employable, but be happy with what their, their, their jobs at some point in time. Uh, we also mobilize students to have uh, skills in entrepreneurship and innovation. We offer transdisciplinary programs, not just uh, cross-disciplinary or multidisciplinary. They are real uh, life uh, programs that uh, addresses uh, skills like design thinking and so on. We also work with the community labs, uh, many community labs that we develop across uh, Malaysia. And this institute also does research on student development to develop life-ready graduates. And the data that we have uh, is uh, used to drive uh, this uh, institute to develop life-ready graduates. The motto or the tagline of this institute is UTM Graduate Prospering Lives. How do we do it? And sorry, first is why, why is it important that we develop a socially conscious, community-minded and life-ready students? First is because yeah, um, it inculcates or nurtures to transformative uh, way for students to learn. They apply their knowledge, problems, uh, addressing real-life challenges uh, through their experiences. Second is it will be able to uh, foster quadruple helix partnership, which is uh, what SDG 17 is all about. We can mobilize key stakeholders through uh, projects and program with the community and leverage on available resources from our partners through the projects and programs to drive social change. And finally, it will be able to prosper lives, yeah? drive social change by improving the quality of life. In many instances, we did yeah, transform the community into uh, for example, eco-tourism community uh, that uh, embrace sustainable living. How do we do it? We Some of the areas, some of the courses that uh, is in the curriculum is the co-curricular service learning that is uh, uh, participated by all students across UTM without exception. There is also another course in the curriculum, the third year of the every student program they have to take uh, excel what we call as extracurricular experiential learning and uh, there is another course call it as uh, sorry these these are project based that uh, goes with excel and extra and uh, co-curricular service learning and uh, faculty focus academic service learning and finally we have utm grand challenges that is embedded into the capstone projects of uh, each faculty. Here are some successful projects and programs that we have undertaken. For example, in co-curricular service learning at the second year, yeah, many students in our two campuses yeah, are supposed to take the courses in uh, clustered into four areas, four clusters. And they, can, they, they are free to choose according to their passion and interest. First is academic, first cluster is academic and professionalism. The second cluster is sports, culture and recreation. And the third is volunteerism. And uh, the fourth one is blocked by the camera. Yeah, well, uh, uh, something over there down the camera. So basically, these are the four clusters where students are supposed to use their, utilize their knowledge to mobilize the community. For example, if they're into sports, they're supposed to uh, teach the community on how to, uh, the techniques to play, for example, soccer or football and uh, be the coach and have clinics for students, for example. So altogether for 2019 alone, we have a total of 77 projects executed or uh, completed uh, involving more than 2,000 students. On another um, course, which is co-curricular service learning projects, yeah, uh, sorry, this is this is this is actually the same course, co-curricular service learning. We call it CCSL. Uh, that is distributed across the state of Johor, which is a southern state in Malaysia, where we are we are located at. And UTM is the focal point in developing all the communities across the districts in Johor. 
altogether uh, in the state of Johor alone we have 37 projects but the 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 projects are distributed across Malaysia. This is on the state of Johor. This is the state of Johor. Half of the project is localized in the state of Johor. And all the projects are pivoted towards SDG goals, along the line of SDG goals. One of the projects that is a uh, very recently uh, awarded to us uh, with a grant of uh, around USD uh, 50,000. Here is uh, the UTM community lab at the uh, area called Benod. So the uniqueness of this project is actually we engage a local champion among UTM students who are originally from the area themselves. This will give them the opportunity and priority to get involved in this project so that when they go back, they can continue to contribute to the locality. So basically involve yeah, technopreneurship, ecotourism, social and education, depending on what the student's expertise and passions are. So the project involves uh, three phases. First is the awareness, yeah, developing awareness to the uh, community around the areas. The team of students will be engaged in that, and they engage with the community and uh, the stakeholders who are participating in the project. And service learning that will involve the community for a period of three years, which the grant is awarded for and the uh, projects that's uh, involved is uh, uh, along the line of SDG, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Another course that I mentioned earlier is on academic service learning is pivoted to each faculty, the core areas of the faculty. For example, if you are from architecture, then the project is about development or land landscaping yeah, involving uh, uh, basically the community that they have engaged in. But the project is actually not involving the architecture students alone. It has to solve the real life problem. When we are solving real life problem, it means that we have to engage all the required disciplines. Yeah, from the beginning, profiling and planning of the project to community engagement to knowledge transfer. Say, for example, we're developing on an ecotourism island. Then basically all these areas and disciplines yeah, related to ecotourism will be engaged. The final uh, um, projects, uh, big programs that we have the students engaged in, the UTM Grand Challenges program, pivoted around 12 Grand Challenges yeah, uh, programs. Uh, for these projects, uh, in 2018 and 2019, we have um, close to 600 or 700 students involved in the Grand Challenges project from across UTM faculties, engineering, non-engineering technical computing and all. So the impacts it has on the community, for example, the impact on, on the society, it established UTM presence or in the form of community lab yeah, for a long time, uh, sustainably with the community, yeah, to develop uh, the community together with the people, the local people uh, around the area. It also established sustainable Cool Ripple Helix with stakeholders uh, so that they can participate and they can contribute yeah, uh, the resources needed for the project. It also in the end prosper the community. For example, uh, one big project that we engaged in 2019 until now is the Tanjung Surat Island, ecotourism island that create job opportunities, entrepreneurial skill, improve the li livelihood of the uh, locals. This is, for example, UTM students transforming, which transformed the Tanjung Surat into an ecotourism island. And this project involved the ministry, several industry, the local government, and the community itself. This is other news headlines in the um, newspapers, the local newspapers about the success story of the Tanjung Surat island and how it impacted the community. The project is given, awarded the grant uh, by the local community and the national government. So impacts on the student, it developed community-minded and socially conscious students through experiential learning. 
At the same time, it nurtures creativity and problem solving and leadership qualities among the students because when they solve real life problems, they actually have to address and they have to learn on the job and uh, develop resilience, adaptability and ultimately life readiness. Students typically discover their talents and passion uh, in uh, these kind of activities and programs. And uh, they'll also develop their, of course, ultimately the community mindedness and social consciousness to the community. So this is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zane. That was really interesting. Um, it's really good to hear of the projects that the students are doing that are contributing to the STG goals, but also to your community that your university is placed in. And they look like some really interesting and exciting projects. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, we're now going to hear from Dr. Malika Singh. So I'll stop sharing. Uh, can you see my presentation? Can yes, yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and um, this is like <laughs> when Professor Singh talk about, you know, the whole picture is quite similar, but I will just deep dive into what we actually doing at SUT. So my topic today would be why and how we support the next generation to be socially conscious. Um, uh, before uh, uh, the whole things, I just want to, uh, to tell you why we do it. Uh, our university uh, vision is like the uh, university aiming at being an excellent academic institution in science, technology, and innovation, and society accountability. And the new white, the, the new rector actually uh, like announced that SUT aim is aiming at being social enterprising university, which is like uh, try to uh, uh, like be the role models, like using the science and technology and, and use it uh, in society, in community around us. And even ourselves should be able to self-sustain, uh, to do more impact, to, to, to create more impact to society. So that's, that's what the new rector really want to be, uh, want SUT to be. And um, another thing is, it, it's, it had been talking a lot that we want to educate the next change makers. Uh, we want our, you know, our student, which is like mostly, mo majority of our students are from like, from provinces, not from central Bangkok. So, so they are from communities. They see lots of problems and, and they should they should be part of the change in that community. That would be really want to, to push this concept uh, in our university. But our university is quite unique that it's uh, like 90, 90, no, 95% of the university are science and tech. Malika, you still there? Is it just my screen she's frozen on? Uh, what's happening? Oh, no, you're still there. You're all right. Um, you ah. froze on my screen, so I was just conscious it was for the whole group, but you're back. Sorry about that. Ah, okay. Did you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so also, uh, yeah, that, that what that what the key. Uh, in our university, uh, there are a big number of scientists, and we, we want to push this or to develop this science and tech student to have this, you know, uh, art and humanity and social and responsibility, you know, mindset. So that would be the, the main point. And so how we do that, if we want to achieve that, we, um, some of the courses had introduced SDG and social problems at the key topics that uh, bring students into the community and learn and help, you know, think about how they be, can, can be part of the 
a solution. And another one is adopt experimental, learn, experimental learning in community settings that bring students into community. And I will ex explore that, uh, ex explain that uh, uh, later. We, and we offer social entrepreneurship courses and other entrepreneurship courses for students, for everyone that freely uh, to take. And another uh, big part is uh, Student Entrepreneurship Development Academy, which is SEDA, uh, which is the, the organization that I am the head, uh, the chief of, of the organization. We use SDG uh, as the main themes for uh, most of the majority of all our entrepreneurship de uh, development activities. Okay, let's go to see uh, um, uh, activities like this one, uh, the nursing, uh, uh, the Institute of Nursing, they they ask us to uh, teach them or to train their student in the design thinking methodology. They have this project. The student would have to go into uh, the community and learn uh, and be in uh, stay in the community, learn about the problem, the health problem, and then they develop the solution or suggestion for 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 the community. And they also work, work closely with university from, from America, so the, uh, you, uh, from Michigan. So they, all, they have like, they have project that student from America, from Michigan, work together with a student uh, from our university uh, in the local community and develop like the new insights and then share experience in solving uh, community health problems. So this is another one that that really like uh, be the leader in 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 working in the community and a student. When we do courses like with these students, uh, the students have have. Uh, community mindset because they they work with the community they go to community they bring the community problem into the real project so that's that it's uh, uh, one one of the courses that or one of the program that that in our university have like you know strong point another one is like engineering student uh, the faculty take the engineering student to learn about like uh, uh, forest uh, uh, conservation problem at the national uh, Kauya National Park because there is world world heritage and it's very diverse it's it world uh, biodiverse uh, national park and and at there there are problem in like water reservation uh, especially waste problem because tourists come to the national park and then they don't they are not responsible for trash and then waste so they trash all the you know plastic and then they are they cause problem in uh, the, in the monkey the elephant and then eat this plastic and so they bring the student to learn about this problem and think and use that engineering knowledge in how we can solve this problem for the for the national park and another thing, uh, beside adding this, you know, uh, community uh, mindset into or problem into courses, another thing is similar to what Professor Shane talk about is we, at, in our university, we add entrepreneurship as a key uh, mindset and, and key activity. So in, in order to do that, we, we try to embed it like, the design thinking, social entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship, entrepreneur mindset into courses and into co-curricular activity and extracurricular activities. Like for example, for this one, it's a course. We have we offer this course three times a year, uh, and each time uh, we can accept like hundred. And this, but this semester is is exception. In this course, we have 430 students in the course. It's a design thinking, it's experiential learning. So we encourage students to look at social problems. And so we use SDG or social uh, and social problem in the community as the, of the project. And we teach them the process of design thinking, uh, similar to what Professor Saint talked about. And they go, they go out to community to understand the problem. 
identify the problem and come back and think about how they can solve the problem. This student, they look at the base in, in, in the beach, on the beach, and so uh, waste in the sea, and they, they make the video presentation and talk about this problem, you know. So they kind of, they, at first they don't understand this problem, but after going through the process, they start understanding and they they start uh, breathing, you know, the problem, and then they they are engaged in thinking about how they can be a uh, part of the solution. And the design thinking, mostly, you know, most students would think about uh, the the social problem. And this is like this semester we do this 450, about 450, 30 students, 58 teams. It's, it's multidisciplinary and it's workshop and experiential learning styles. We use coaching process at least two, we ask them to do at least two iterations of the, pro, of the project. We use 30 facilitators and four facilitators to run this program. <laughs> it's a lot. And we use hybrid model, both online, offline, progress meeting. And because it's 58 team, we do, we do two days online pitching and live on Facebook group. <laughs> so we do quite a lot. And social entrepreneurship course, this is like deep dive into the, the real problem, similar to what Professor Saint talked about in, in UTM. And they go to the community, stay with the community for two or three days. I work with community and decide solution for the community. So similar to what, uh, what, what, what uh, in UTM. So the camp that they go to, they, they, we call it make a different camp. And all the technopreneurship courses and other entrepreneurship courses, we, we uh, share the knowledge in social problem and we, we use SDG as a as the as a main 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 themes uh, similar to 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 other courses so they, this for for technopreneurship and other entrepreneurship courses beside side thinking they use to they have to develop business idea and business models uh, for sustainable sustainable of the project as well but the design thinking, they don't have to think about that. They just focus on understanding the problems and the uh, design solution. And this is act activities that, that we uh, uh, offer in SEDA. You can see that the red one, this is the, the activity, extracurricular activities that we use SDG as a social concept or social problems to nurture the new, the young generation into thinking about how can they be part of the solution of the social problems. So we have like a lot of activities that aiming at this, like this one. And you can see that uh, we used uh, good health and well-being, uh, sustainable city and community, energy problems. So we do a lot of hackathon, Silo West hackathon, service camp, ideaton. Uh, uh, or we even have the specific innovation boot camps specifically uh, on on topics. And this is the the way they look. They go out to to see the problem. They have to go out like this. And this is based problem. You can see that they go out and interview people, uh, stakeholders, and beside asking them to go out in our activities. We also educate students through the design of activities, like we deduce plastic waste. So we use like uh, uh, no, uh, banana leaf as a, as a uh, uh, what, material. And we ask them to prepare a plastic bottle uh, from homes and we teach them how to separate waste. So, so instead of just going out, Along the activity, we educate them into this uh, problem. But the challenge is when we educate them, they get inspired. They would have to, they would like to do something about it. But uh, in 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 our in Thailand, it's still limited support in terms of funding. It's quite difficult to get funding to to for them to do that even for our university time allocation they are engaged in and studying and a lot of, of expectation for many people 
So this would be the challenge to go forward to how we make impact from, from that. And I think I, I would like to pose this challenge to discuss, for the discussion uh, in the panel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Malika. That was, again, a really interesting um, presentation. It really is good to hear how your students, again, are engaged with the community and, and really making a difference to to the problems that are faced by communities. It's, it's, it's really good to hear. Um, we're now going to hear from Professor P.B. Anant. Professor Anand, do you want to just take yourself off mute as well? Thank you. Yes, I am unmuted. Good okay. morning. I hope you can hear me and you can see my screen. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's a real pleasure and privilege to share some ideas uh, in this forum, World Technology Universities Network, and it's always uh, very inspiring to hear from uh, uh, colleagues. Um, and we are all thinking on similar kind of things, so it's a real pleasure in that sense. Um, so I'm going to kind of just present some examples from our journey towards uh, SDGs uh, led, led predominantly by our students. So I would like to call this uh, Be the Change. I am head of the Peace Studies and International Development. Uh, at, at also, I'm a professor of public policy and sustainable development. So this is kind of, you know, very close to my heart and my passion. Um, OK, so. <laughs> We were just, you know, when we were thinking about this theme, actually, I was thinking that, you know, we don't need to do anything social, you know, to promote social consciousness. I think students are by definition uh, really socially conscious. Um, in fact, we were joking with colleagues that maybe it's the academics who need to become socially conscious as well. I know just that's, that's a, I think we, our starting point is that students are very aware of the present issues. Um, number two, and they do care. They want to make a difference and they come with that passion. Sometimes that it is that passion that drives them to choose a particular program or a course or something like that. So I think that is also a starting point. Students do care and they are willing to give time. So if you set aside some tasks and, uh, you know, they, the number of hours that they can spend on those kind of tasks is just very, very inspirational and they are very creative. We found that in a number of, uh, you know, projects that we have done. So I'm going to share with you some examples. So this is one we did a couple of years ago. So this is uh, we were thinking in terms of, you know, SDG six uh, about water scarcity and sanitation, especially and how to raise awareness. We also found at that time that, uh, you know, even in the UK, for example, um, that up to 30 percent of adults, um, especially men, I think, um, tend not to wash their hands, if you like, after using the facilities. So there was a kind of a public awareness, public health awareness. You know, of course, today we are in the middle of the pandemic and hand washing has become almost like the mantra. But at that time, it seemed like, you know, 30 percent seemed like a big number. And also we wanted to connect it with the fact that, um, you know, several billion people don't have access to these kind of things that we take for granted. So students kind of thought about various activities and this was on a single day it was you know the whole we took over the atrium space in our university and two faculty students from two faculties worked and created various kinds of games so this is one of the examples so where you can take a selfie with uh, your head in the toilet and uh, you know for that you donate some money uh, for the world toilet day so that's how we kind of worked and it was just the buzz and uh, another was uh, uh, toilet roll themed cake, you know, someone baked and you had to guess the weight and all kinds of games. I mean, it was just unbelievable. The buzz uh, within a matter of about three and a half to four hours, they raised about 800 pounds, which was, you know, in a campus, uh, predominantly students and stuff. I think that was that was just a, a, a phenomenal success. The second one, uh, there are various examples I could give, but I just picked a few. So this one, um, Holocaust Memorial Day, normally tends to be, you know, it's a very poignant moment to reflect on the genocides, um, not only in the Second World War, but also since then, and to think of all the victims and why those kind of things happen. So this is very closely related to SDG 16. And, you 
you know, Peace Studies, our department. So this is something very close to many of our students. But also this was again a university wide kind of event and students then decided to create various kinds of, you know, there was an artwork display I will show in a moment. Um, and here is a kind of a forming a human chain to remember all the victims of uh, Holocaust and um, uh, uh, since then. We also had a student from Rwanda, so that made it even more poignant. So we heard from him in terms of the genocide in Rwanda itself. So again, this is another another example. The third example I want to give, this is about, uh, this is also, I think, an entry to WTUN student competition. Uh, they did not win it, but they were in the top 10. So this is a kind of a street cleaning campaign. So one of our students had a child who goes to a primary school just down the street. And while dropping her child at the school, she noticed that there was a lot of litter and also NOS, the nitrous oxide uh, canisters and things like that being littered there. So school children, primary school children had to walk through these streets to go to the school and come back. So it seemed like it was not a very positive environment. So we had a lot of discussions. We spoke to the school and school teachers were also uh, recognizing this problem and we spoke to uh, the council and so the whole process was designed as a kind of a social media campaign and some local communities and charities also showed interest they also joined so we had this kind of three four different days when this uh, litter picking campaign uh, was arranged so we all went and kind of tried to uh, of course with all safety in terms of gloves and things to try to pick uh, pick a litter especially these kind of glass and sharps and uh, you know from drug use for example those kind of things so it needed you know and and then there is an app in which you could actually photograph and tag it so then it geocodes so that and that you know kind of in a way presents this map in terms of where predominantly litter is occurring and so from that awareness is raised and then partnership with the school is kind of you know is trying is developed the third one um, this is again a lot of work has gone into it it was supposed to be a actual um, so it's sustainable today towards end of March, but obviously we went into the lockdown in uh, in March by March 18th. Um, uh, our university was moving towards the lockdown. Um, so then since several months of work had already gone into it, so we decided to move it to a, a virtual day. So we celebrated it on the 5th of June, which is World Environment Day. And this planet pledge was kind of designed by students through consultation in terms of what should go in and what should not go in. And from that, this was developed and this is voluntarily already taken by over 100 students and staff. And we, um, the coming year students also have shown interest to continue to do that. And I can I can go on. There are several other examples that we could give, but most important uh, takeaways from our experience um, are that um, you need to create immersive experiences um, again, both uh, uh, our my predecessor speakers have uh, emphasized the importance of immersive experiences, but also we find that you should not over plan. Uh, I think you need to leave certain things open um, and that creates uncertainty, but that also enables that creativity to come into picture. I think we've, we would say goals are more important than uh, um, a specific uh, kind of, um, uh, you know, um, details of how to do it. Uh, keep the process simple and inclusive. Let people join as and when they can and and have a lot more kind of opportunities to join and also focus on principles and not results. So results will follow, but I think having principles is more important so that students recognize that this is a participatory activity and everybody is equally uh, you know, part of it. And to the extent possible, they can align all three in terms of curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular. So that's where I think a lot of creativity has gone in. And in the toilet uh, example I gave, there was one game that students came up with, which is uh, based on netball. So they borrowed the netball uh, kind of the post, etc. But instead of throwing a ball, you had to throw a toilet roll. Yeah. And so then you realize, you know, how difficult it is actually to aim. And uh, so there was kind of a lot of competition. So those kind of things that was aligning the curricular with the extracurricular and it becomes a kind of a memorable experience and connecting the local with the global. So the waste picking example I gave is, uh, you know, a, a publishing this information on an app, sharing with other communities where litter problem is and what they are trying to do, etc. And the kind of for the academics and for the institutions, I think it's there are also important takeaways um, like charity, social change begins at home. So we cannot expect our students 
to take these ideas seriously if the institution itself does not show that we take these ideas seriously too. So in our case, we are, I think, very fortunate that our university strategy, our vice chancellor clearly recognizes uh, sustainability as one of the important values of the university. So that is embedded across the university's functioning. So I think that makes it a very important uh, kind of you know, uh, starting point. Second, um, I think we need to move away from the lighthouse model. We should not think, you know, as I said, that uh, it, we have to make the students socially conscious. I think they are very, very socially conscious. So our role is to facilitate rather than to lead. Um, so in that sense, you know, just create the opportunities and then let the, the kind of through participation, through discussion, let it take its course. So I think that ability to facilitate is very important. Learning in both directions. So academics working as partners with students, I think that is again that reinforces the idea that we are as much, you know, we care as much about this as students rather than as a kind of, you know, standoff. And academics also need to leave the values before they can expect students to do so. We did a campaign on waste and waste management, etc. And we visited a local waste management site and we learned about University of Bradford's own waste management policy and things like that. But students then kind of mentioned that, but we saw that so-and-so professor, you know, is always uh, seen with, a, you know, a coffee cup, which is, uh, you know, disposable. So this kind of, you know, small um, uh, examples like that can uh, erode everything that you are trying to achieve. So I think academics also need to leave the values and humility and openness by academics is very important. Um, and so that is related to the idea of, you know, partnership. And finally, willingness to invest in, invest time. So students are willing to give a lot of time, whether academics are also prepared to give time. I think that's a very important part. Um, if you really want to these kind of initiatives to succeed and make any progress in terms of, you know, transformational way um, to create those experiences, which will be life, you know, kind of uh, a lifetime experiences and uh, transformation in terms of the values that they can imbibe, then that investment of time is really worth it. So those are some of the points I wanted to share. So I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Um, it brought some really good memories. I remember the um, World Toilet Day being in the atrium. It was um, a really good event um, and very challenging as well. I think it's not just um, challenging for academics, but it's challenging for all university staff and students to contribute to these um, projects and events that can make a difference to our communities. Um, finally, we're going to hear from Dr. Armadou Bello. Hi, can you hear me? Thank you. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I am Jalia Bello and I am an assistant professor in finance and the sustainable development goals lead in the Faculty of Business and Law. During this presentation, to get my slides to move. Uh, great. During this presentation, we'll briefly look at our sustainability initiatives collaborative online international learning event. We called it the SDGs Hackathon, potential for application of this hackathon and also some resources. I think our sustainability initiatives actually answers the why of this session's team, which is socially conscious students, why and how we support the next generation. We have a, a couple of sustainability initiatives and we're very committed to the development of uh, creative problem solving skills for our students to help students gain the key competent skills to face global challenges in an ever changing world. And we've seen what happened with um, COVID-19. Why? Because our students matter in this global movement towards sustainable world. So for that, for those reasons and many other reasons, we have a couple of sustainability initiatives. The Responsible Futures is a program of the National Union for, of Students and they carry out yearly sustainability survey and social responsibility and sustainability audit every three years. We are also signatories to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal Accord. 
you know, this came about after the adoption of the SDGs in 2015, and I think it's the realization that higher education plays an important role towards a sustainable world. There are also faculty linked initiatives um, such as the United Nations Principles for Responsible Management Education in the Faculty of Business and Law. So all these things uh, shows all these um, initiatives show our commitment towards um, sustainability. We do a lot of activities, but today I'm going to share with you the SDGs hackathon we did this year. Um, I'm lucky we're able to achieve this before COVID-19 um, because a lot of things you know were put on hold. So the SDGs hackathon is just one of the house of the theme of this session. We support our students. It was a 24 hour collaborative online international learning event, and the aim is to bring people from different disciplines to explore real issues related to SDGs in global South economies. Participating institutions include Coventry University, UNIST from Brazil, and Ghana Technology University of College from Ghana. COIL is one way we work with non-partner institutions. So if you have an idea you want us to work with, we can do that. And if you have any idea we want to work with you, we can invite you to work with us through a COIL project. The hackathon, well, different people, different roles, 10 students from each partner, each team was multidisciplinary and also cross-cultural. The levels of study also differ. Quite interesting to see an architect working with an engineer, with somebody that is studying finance, very, very interesting. And uh, I think what was really nice for me to see during this event is that I walked into the room and I saw my students listening to music from Brazil and Nigeria, different, you know, cultures coming together. There were mentors, which um, most of them were university staff and some industry experts. They helped to guide the discussions of the students and the judges helped in deciding the winning team. They are completely independent of um, any team. Each goal, we looked at five SDGs and each goal was looked at in a case study um, country context. So Trinidad and Tobago, affordable and clean energy, Ghana, industry, innovation and infrastructure, um, goal 12, responsible consumption and production, Malaysia, Brazil, climate action and poverty in Nigeria. The main tasks include the students to work together, you know, come up with possible challenges to attaining some targets of the SDGs and proffer feasible solutions. They will at the end submit a group report on the global goal they worked on and the difficulties they faced during the challenge, a team video on the goal they worked on as well and why they are individually driven to make a change. I must say that this was a completely voluntary project. So the students are signed up are very socially aware of what is happening. Evidence of communication among team members should be shown. We have the virtual learning environment where we hosted the project, but they're also allowed to use WhatsApp as long as they share evidence on the platform. This was the platform we used. It's called the Open Module platform. Sorry to interrupt. Um, the slides aren't moving on for us um, from what we can see. Um, oh, so that's worked. What you've done now has worked. So we were just seeing your title slide. OK, so I just exited the um, presentation. Is it OK to carry yeah, on now? That's so um, I was listening anyway and followed. Um, so you can continue from where you were at. OK, thank you very much. So this was um, the event platform. They could use um, um, WhatsApp or any other means of communicating and then um, upload the evidence on the platform. A brief of the activities that um, we had. This is not exhaustive, but I want you to know that a lot of the activities was centered around, you know, were centered around team check in team times because we really want them to build out that team working um, spirit, that communication skills. This was how we started with a welcome address by myself. Uh, we had a visiting professor from Brazil 
and the head of um, global engagement in the School of Economics, Finance and Accounting. We then had a keynote, a research led keynote presentation from Professor Benny from the Center for Business in Society within the Faculty of Business and Law. This is a very vibrant center. They do a lot of work on the SDGs. We had uh, we have three centers within the Faculty of Business and Law. We have the International Center for Transformational Entrepreneurship, Center for Financial and Corporate Integrity, and the Center for Business in Society. We then had an activity called the Enterprise Session delivered by Coventry University Social Enterprise. Really good work being done by these people. They have funding opportunities and their aim is the development of socially responsible entrepreneurs. So they have funding opportunities for people, for students who have uh, ideas about business, business ideas linked with the um, global goals. We also had mentor panels. These um, happened um, separately. So we've got Brazil here facing their own uh, mentors. We have Ghana, we have um, Coventry University, just to sort of you know guide the discussion of students. That was a live session in the morning during the lunch and a live session during video production. This we find really interesting. So we called each of the partner university and discussed with them live how things were going and how the video, video production was, was going. Um, so that's about the SDGs hackathon. I have a lot of information if you want me to share with you later, but I'm cautious of time. So I want to just briefly tell you about other events in 2020. Here we had the audit exercise for modules that are not designed with sustainability or SDGs in mind. If you recall on the second slide, although you said they were not moving, <clears throat> um, on the second slide I did mention our sustainability initiative and one of them was the Responsible Futures which had the yearly sustainable survey and so social responsibility and sustainability audit every three years. So during the 2019-2020 survey, 69% of our students indicated that they want to learn more about the SDGs within their modules. So we had this audit exercise to check what our staff are already doing. If you're in academia, you know that you don't want to overburden academics. You want to first see what they're doing. If they're doing well, then you just, you know, um, encourage them to do more. So we had this audit exercise. I personally held 16 separate meetings with module leaders during the May cohort, and it's interesting to see that um, the SDG SDGs coverage within our modules. I must say that goal, goal eight, which is the decent work, had the highest coverage within our modules. Also, um, we have an annual green week usually in March, so we were lucky to have had it this time before COVID because it was the beginning of March. And during this green week, four fund managers of Coventry University came to talk to our students about our socially uh, about our responsible investment strategies. It was really important, especially seeing students being engaged at that level that their opinion matter. Finally, for this year, we were able to draft an SDGs EAUC paper. EAUC stands for Environmental Associations of uh, Universities and Colleges, for which Coventry University belonged to. And um, we were able to draft a paper, and that paper details some of the activities of uh, student activities, um, teaching, and also staff training about um, SDGs. It will be there will be a link to this paper at the end of the slide. So I'm going to share the slide with you and you can share further. Potential for replication of the hackathon. I think it's really important to replicate it everywhere. Um, why? Because student engagement is increased, you know, when they're working on real life uh, projects, real life problems and the hackathon provided and that and the SDGs as well are all about real life. So it's really important to um, replicate this kind of project. We suggest that future events should run completely online. You know, it was a 24 hour online project, the one we had in February, but we still had them in a room, you know, 
this time around everybody is home so we can have everyone um, working differently and that we suggest maybe it should involve employers of labor um, or those governing the cities of participating university by employers of labor we mean by local companies uh, in the area and um, those governing the cities could be the city councils to work with the community will be really really important all participating institutions can contribute maybe a day for Bradford University for instance another day for Coventry University that sort of uh, um, idea um, to share you know lectures activities games etc we suggest that it should be for more than a day to allow students to really bond in our situation they knew the teams they were working on you know they had the projects but it was on the day of the hackathon that they got to meet their their team teammates and um, that finally brought me to resource um, page so uh, we have this paper which you can you know read and share any any um, do's and don'ts with us what you think can be improved and the SDGs module audit spreadsheet can be found here and then um, it can be used as well. Curriculum 2025 was established following our you know, signatory to the accord and also because we're really, really committed to sustainable uh, um, development. So one of the themes of Curriculum 2025 is sustainability and social responsibility. And here is their um, link. Please do check them out and um, share anything you want to share with us. And Thank you very much for listening to me. And I'm really sorry that my slides were not moving. They always move. I don't know what happened today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bella. Don't worry about your slides. You gave a really good presentation without them anyway. Um, I thought it was the hackathon sounds like a really exciting event and a really exciting opportunity for students and i also um liked how it then had an impact on the curriculum at your university which is a really positive impact of it so we've heard from all our panelists now so now it's time for you to ask any questions um just to recap what i said at the beginning if you want to ask the question you can either use the chat function or you can raise your hands and we'll call upon you to um to ask your question when it comes to your turn so does anybody have a question that they'd like to ask any of our panelists Oh, everyone's very quiet. Um, I'll ask a question then. So, um, Dr. Bello, um, you covered how you hope it will be an online hackathon in response to COVID-19. But I, I think for all our panelists, how do you, um, how will you approach your community um, university engagement of these projects, given the restrictions that COVID presents us at the moment? Zane, would you like to go first? Yeah, well, um, we are we are we have been quite fortunate uh, over the last couple of months. Uh, Malaysia has not been so intense in terms of COVID uh, infections, but uh, things are getting and uh, not getting better. <laughs> it's getting worse. At this time, but uh, the government is taking steps to control the infection. So for the past two months, we've been able to engage with the community. But before that, the plan we 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 focus on the planning as well as the communication with the community and uh, stakeholders through online uh, through online means. So essentially, th there is no other choice but we have to actually engage online uh, and uh, focus on the parts that we can uh, we can manage through online uh, means so basically but, but during august and july uh, the 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 country has been open so we are able to engage with the community that way that's that's what the situation in uh, in, in utm <laughs> yeah and um, yeah for for me um during the covid um we are locked down. <laughs> we have been locked down at that time, and school. You have, we have to teach through the from home, and I have course in design thinking, you know, and and technopreneurship class, and we have done. 
we have to do the, the experimental, you know, experiential learning and use the community problems. And it's all really side a process because it has to be totally online. So we have to decide the whole package of, you know, communication, direction, assessment and everything <laughs> because it's a course. So we, so what I have had done was, uh, first of all, I start having my staff and my, my former student as a teaching facilitators. And, and we, we need people uh, more than one or two. We have others to help like coach each group during the time and we use Zoom for breakout rooms. And then we contact, we use, we ask students, I ask students, uh, use your own community or your own, look at the problem around you and use your community as a case. So you, you because they, don't, they, they cannot go further from home, right? So ask them, look at your home, look at your parents, look at your, your uh, neighbors, what, what problem they have. So, and, and we start, uh, you know, going from, from, you know, uh, from their own problems and then reach out through, you know, Skype or, you know, uh, um, Facebook lines and, and telephone call to reach out to other people in the community. Yes. Thank you. Can I add? So our experience was very similar. As I mentioned, we were planning for months about a sustainability day to be held in March. And then we went into lockdown and then we were communicating, of course, initially about moving, you know, classes online. And so that was the initial focus. So once that was kind of, you know, on hand and the uh, semester was completed, then immediately we had, uh, you know, kind of thought about, can we do it on Zoom? What can we do? And so that's when we came up with this idea of a virtual sustainability day. And so we chose and uh, we had, uh, you know, kind of designed the event. It was about a three hour event. And already students have traveled. For example, some of the students were were in US, some were in Japan, but they all participated. The time zone difference was enormous. So it was, you know, it was a sleeping time for someone and uh, early morning for someone and late in the evening for, and it was still, you know, nearly 100 people participated over three hours and students presented in terms of, you know, their kind of perception. Now we linked also, we linked it with in terms of COVID-19 and the post, you know, kind of a pandemic recovery, how it could be different and what it should be. So in a sense, you know, it kind of it provided that uh, that that link, if you like. So at the moment we are still continuing, as you know, we are in a kind of a blended learning situation. So there's there's some face to face um, context, but still it limits very significantly the amount of what we can do. You know, the, all the photographs we have shown that human contact and proximity and working together, those are absolutely crucial for this kind of a collective collaborative problem solving approach. So I think we have to think really creatively to, to come up with, you know, the other ways of doing. So what you suggested in terms of, you know, your design thinking and thinking around, you know, your immediate neighborhood and reflecting and sharing those kind of approaches um, and, and the hackathon idea that uh, Zalia mentioned. So I think these are very interesting. So we have to kind of try these again, share, you know, our experiences and continue to share, I think, you know, so I'm, I'm really uh, optimistic that, you know, we will we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for our panel? Can okay. I just oh, ask, yeah. can I ask? Yeah, I think uh, both Professor Zain and uh, Professor Malika, um, I think, you know, the examples you gave and uh, students wanting to do something, you know, for their own communities, for example, I think you have a huge resource there. And in comparison, I think Perhaps one constraint that Zalia and uh, I face, you know, as a British university is that our student population tends to be very international, very global. So um, yes. I, I, I think, uh, you know, 
we in some respects we are jealous or we are envious of uh, you know the the immediate direct connection but we do in in a different way in the sense even though our students come from kind of you know much wider in many many countries sometimes you know up to 25 30 countries are represented in the classroom and then we are kind of using bradford or in your case i'm sure coventry as a kind of a lens to look at you know and we use these uh, uh, examples um, so I just want to kind of pick your brains, all three of you, in terms of, you know, do you have any specific kind of challenges in trying to do that? Um, yes, do you have any? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. But I want to pick on what you said about having our students come from different places. So uh, there's some, this is about global connectedness. So we're all really globally connected. We're really interdependent, you know, and um, the beyond of my my you know my own presentation says in classroom and beyond the beyond also has to do with our students because they come from different places they come here to study and they leave to go back to their places so they're taking away knowledge with them as well and then they engage with their community so uh, yeah we have that advantage and at the same time we have a disadvantage that we are in a you know advanced country and i can say that because in 2015-16 i had this online um campaign about awareness of sdgs and within you know a couple of days you're able to see hundreds close to thousands of people you know young students from from africa from nigeria participating it's not the same here because yes we are in advanced um, um place there is a challenge and the main challenge in running a program, uh, program like this is in the UK, we have so many activities for our students, so many activities for our students, lectures, you know, and they have their own student union activities as well. So you really have to find somebody that is truly interested to, to sign up for a voluntary um, projects, unless if you want to incorporate it into their modules, and we're looking to do that to, um, to incorporate COIL projects into the modules, so it can, it can run within just a, a seminar session. Maybe just this one seminar will bring in students from Malaysia, bring in students from Brazil, and you solve a particular question. I think that's the way we will solve these kind of challenges. Thank you. Yeah, to respond. Sorry, I needs a reaction from us. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah well, uh, of course, in our case, uh, we, we, we are more biased towards the um, uh, local locality, local situations in Malaysia because uh, the majority of the students, I would say about 80 percent, 80 percent are local students and uh, not too little, about 20% are international students. So the uh, projects more or less uh, focus on the majority of the students are local students who participated in the projects, but we do have international projects like those in CMLV countries, CLMV countries, Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos, and Vietnam. So basically these are the international projects that we bring international students together yeah, to assist a community to do uh, to develop community. Also, the easier part is actually the ecotourism type of projects, and we do have uh, engineering projects like water treatment projects and uh, and uh, uh, sustainability projects that we do in uh, CMLV countries involving international students. So these kind of projects are much less as compared to the local projects, but we do have them uh, engage the international students in this kind of projects. Yeah, for us, the challenge, because we are quite local and the majority are local people, local students, so we have lack, we lack uh, like international mindset into the students. So what we do, Actually, uh, last uh, WT, uh, WTUN uh, Congress, I presented uh, the Global Entrepreneurship Camp. So, so we try, so we, we do that. So we, we bring in students from abroad, like Coventry so, and other countries. So we have students joining and, and uh, separating in groups and discuss com problems, like common theme, like, okay, poverty and, 
So what what property means or what uh, what is like in their own country? So they share this knowledge together and then they think about a solution together. So so that would be uh, uh, the way to overcome it. And we do a lot of uh, we try to reach out to to other countries to to do activity together in in order to bring in this global mindset and global global uh, global problems into the students. Yeah. Thank you. It looks like we've got a question um, with a hand up from Emma Rhymes. Emma, would you like to ask your question? Hi. Um, yeah, I'm I'm from Coventry University as well, so I'm a CSR officer there. Hi. <laughs> um, it was just to add to what you were saying. Um, so CSR is quite a new department for us, even though there's been a lot of organic stuff that's been happening across the university. We've actually only had the department probably between 12 and 18 months now. Um, so just to add to that, there is a variety um, of activity that's going on across the university. But our presence is to try and streamline that. So we're creating kind of a working group to see all this fantastic stuff that's going on. But actually look at how we can streamline that and create a pathway for students that they can really understand all these different opportunities. Um, and it was also just to go back onto the, I know you asked a question as well, that some of the challenges was about funding. Um, and a brilliant example which we gave was actually our social enterprise. Um, so that could be something that you could look at. Um, they actually do a lot of the legwork for students. So they create them partnerships um, to look for funding for them. And then they can do pictures, et cetera, for students to sort of have that funding. Um, they also deliver um, kind of a lot of sessions to help students um, on how and where to look for funding. Um, so that's a suggestion for you. More than a question. Sorry, I feel like I've just rambled there. <laughs> <clears throat> now, thank you, Emma, for your contribution. Yes, Emma is right. We have so many programs on sustainability. Like, literally, we'll need a whole day to sit down and go through this. And we have 12 research centers across the university, each one working on sustainability. And uh, there are a lot of things going on. Uh, we, we just can't say it in 10 minutes. So, but we are happy to say it later if you, if you want to reach out, reach out to us. Yeah, thank you, Emma, for adding that up. I'll share a link in the chat box to the um, Coventry University Social Enterprise. Is that okay? Thank you. Can I just add very briefly? Um, so I think um, Bradford also is very similar. Um, Bradford obviously through Ecoversity project, a lot of work was embedded, you know, in terms of sustainability into curriculum, et cetera, almost 12, 13 years ago. So I, in some respects, I think, uh, you know, Bradford um, was way ahead, if you like, you know, well before SDGs, et cetera. Um, over a period of time, of course, you know, when once you kind of achieve the university status or something, you kind of tend to take for granted. So things can a little bit, uh, you know, uh, become a little bit passive. But uh, recently, again, uh, there is a sustainability project team. Uh, so looking at in terms of not only the physical landscape and the buildings and uh, the, the estate, but in terms of connecting it with, you know, a kind of a of the university itself in, in, in various dimensions as to how we actually pursue our corporate uh, aim of sustainability. How is it embedded in everything we do in our procurement policy, our travel policy, for example, or in terms of staff training opportunities um, and, and things like that. So this this work, I think, is, is you know, it, it mirrors what you're what you're saying about co commentary. Um, and and also circular economy is a very important uh, concept for us. So we had the world's, I think, one of the first uh, circular economy MBAs. So in our business school, uh, my colleague, Professor Amir Sharif, you know, he leads uh, leads on that. Um, and so again, that kind of, you know, embedding that into uh, entrepreneurship. So final year project, for example, for every student in management, the final year undergraduate project is focused on SDGs. Very similar to the grand challenges uh, ideas that uh, that you had mentioned. Uh, also, Professor Zain mentioned earlier. So I think it's it's you know it, it mirrors some some of those similar things. Yeah. That's great. Thank you, Professor. Professor, um, sorry. Oh, sorry, Dr. Bella, you okay. go ahead. 
Professor Anand, we had a circular economy hackathon in March as well, and that was held by the Center for Business and Society. So we have a professor that deals with that. If you ever need a contact, please do let me know. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you um, to all our panelists today and to our delegates for coming. Um, we have run out of time um, for this session, but I hope you all enjoyed it and found it really interesting. Um, Jenny, what's next on the program for everyone to join? Hi, yeah, next up we've got our showcase session, um, which we'll, we'll hear from two um, exchange participants from the Wilton Exchange Program, and also we'll hear from a member of our student teams um, who won part of the competition earlier in the year. So if you'd like to join that, please do move over and join that. That starts at 10.45 UK time, so it's about 15 minutes. That's great. Again, thank you all for joining us this morning and enjoy the rest of the Congress. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye.